Hello everyone and welcome to The Fens Sheriff's Department by Monkey Spunk, a sequel to a fantastic mod, The Bleachers, A Diamond City Story. So if you haven't seen that, uh, I do have a whole playlist here. Uh, otherwise, a uh, quick catch up. Basically, people live in the bleachers. Big surprise there. There's uh, Dr. Pepper. He sells stuff and he makes soda. Uh, Dr. Barbara. There was a spaghetti dinner. And Lily, a uh, local badass who would get power armor and uh, repair it up for the Fens Sheriff Department, uh, was killed during a solo quest. And that's where we left off last time. So uh, this takes off right after those events. So uh, Lily was just taken out by the raiders, basically. And uh, we have a note in our mailbox. We're, a we're actually in Lily's room. So this mod does also include the entirety of the, uh, the bleachers. So you do not need to download that as a separate file. Uh, you can just uh, download this one and you're good to go. All right, so uh, we just got a letter in our mailbox. Um, Al chest breach. The sheriff recovered Lily's body. We are going to the Adam Cat garage to have a funeral service for Lily. Please join us. It would mean a lot. Dr. McClintock. And uh, that is at the Adam Cat's garage, so that's where we're going. <laughs> oh. Fine, Jerry. You know what, Jerry? That's that's fine. Come on, let's go. Steve, you can put on a bow tie. Oh my God, everyone's here. You're all gonna miss the funeral. Real respectful. Oh, Biff. Hey, Biff. Real respectful. Whoa, dog patrol. Dog patrol. Mm 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 mm. Better watch out. Oh. The sun went away. Sorry, chicken. Duke, Blue Jay. How rude. Speak to DP. Oh, hey, man. <clears throat> there you are. Dr. Pepper, how are you? It's been a while, but I hope you're doing good. The sheriff went to Mass Chem and recovered Lily's body for us. There's no burial plots in Diamond City. So we brought her to her second home. We all agreed she'd like a view of the ocean the most. And Riza wanted to be able to watch over her grave. So here we are. Um, of course. I'm all yours. Good to hear. Come on, let's get started. Also, this I am playing an early release. Thank you all for coming to pay your respects to our friend and family member, Lily. I can only speak for myself and DP, but we haven't been able to think about much else since the loss. So, I thought it would be nice to share uh, some of there. the good things we remembered about her, instead of only dwelling on how much we hurt. I think we can all agree that Lily would want us to remember her with a smile. DP, you knew her longer than anyone, since she was almost a baby. Yeah. Why don't you tell us something about her? Of course, Bob. <clears throat> So Doc is right. Me, Lily, and Zeke here grew up in Diamond City. And I don't need to tell you that Lily was the toughest little girl I ever met. Parents were killed by raiders when she was just a toddler. Trash can Carla found her hiding in some bushes by their bodies. Carla brought her to the city and left her with the first guard she found. The rest is Lily's story. If you call anything in Diamond City, the streets. Well, and that's where she grew up. Always getting into fights. Always coming to my mom to clean and wash another black eye or bloody nose when she'd fight her bullies. My mom would offer to take her in. So did Becky and Kathy. But Lily said handouts weren't her style. She was saying that at five years old. And that's what I remember most about Lily. She started making her own way in this hell before she lost all her baby teeth. She was some kind of rad badger or something, because she just didn't give a f- Jameson. She went out and did Lily. I'm gonna miss you, little hellion. Oh my god. Thanks, DP. Thanks for cruising out to our digs, you know. Nice to see you again after so many years. So Lily, our first and best fixer and the greatest Adam Cat to ever wear the armor. Those shiners and bloody beaks she got from the bullies that DP was talking about. She got them because she never backed down. It's true. I'm sorry. I can't disrespect her by talking like that. <coughs> I wanted to say she never once gave up what was hers to those bullies. Not a single damn time, ever, no matter how many of them there were. Because that's Lily. 
She wouldn't let us give up our stuff to them neither if she was there. Cause that's Lily. Usually a sucker punch, cause that's Lily. <laughs> but that's where she got all those black eyes, DP. I thought you guys should know that. Not random fights, but from fighting back. She was with me when we started the Adam Cats. And I know I lay it on thick and tell you guys I whacked a pack of ferals for the garage. But the truth is, it was Lily. You need to know that. And she didn't care that I kept telling you that it was me, cause that's Lily, kicking the right asses harder than anyone else. All this power armor we got, the Adam Cats, the garage, none of it would be here if it wasn't for her. Stay cool, sister. Rizzo? We had plans, you know? We talked about it, had it all worked out. You wanted me to move in with our DP, Barb. Well, that's what I was gonna do when the time was right. It was gonna be nice. We were gonna move her workbench to right field, set up a nice family area in her room, raise a couple of kids, Lily style. I thought about it a lot. Made me smile thinking about a couple of toddlers terrorizing the bleachers. Can you imagine Lily as a mom? Uncle DP and Aunt Barb. Oh, uh, yeah. God damn. Jameson. But I wouldn't have had it any other way. Would have been beautiful. I'll see you on the other side. My one and only. Wait for me there. I remember the first time I met Lily. It was only the second time I'd ever been to Diamond City. It was also only the second time I'd ever been more than a mile from Vault 81's front entrance. To give you some perspective. The deputies were escorting me around the outside of the city to find somewhere for the greenhouse. Lily was arriving from the garage here with Large Marge, hauling another load of power armor. As you can imagine, a full day's walk with that Brahmin left her... Well, I smelled them a block away. <clears throat> I didn't say anything. I just stared, open-mouthed as we passed each other. I must have stuck out like a sore thumb. I just assumed she went around like that all the time, and was horrified that a wastelander could live that way. <laughs> she said something like, I could get good cap for that juicy, soft, vault rat skin of yours, and kept walking, which just scared me even more. Needless to say, that didn't stop us from becoming friends not long after she showered, and we met again in DP's diner that evening. They say you can't choose your family, but I chose Lily. And that's what Lily is to me. Aww. She's my little sister. And this awful world took her from me. And it's so empty without her. <laughs> this isn't over, Lily. Every score will be settled in this life. I promise you that. Most of you know how I ended up in the Commonwealth. Where I come from, what I used to be, how I fled with my husband, pregnant as a bus. I don't know if I missed that. Lily was the first person we met on the way down here that didn't try to shoot us. We were on our way to Diamond City, but Evan had other plans for his arrival time. It was Lily who found us as I was screaming through labor. Unfortunately, some synths had heard me too, and tried to kill my baby before he was even, well, out. We had no idea what they were, had never seen one before. We just knew that they wanted to kill us and my baby. Lily heard the firefight by pure chance. She had just formed the Atom Cats here with Zeke and was joyriding in her new power armor. She turned those synths into scrap metal in her power armor and saved the three of us that day. She took us back to Diamond City and introduced us to the sheriff, in her own unique way, before stomping off. I'll never forget seeing her and her power armor stomping those synth heads. She was so young. Just a kid. I thought we were gonna die, but me, my family, little Evan born in a firefight, we're all alive because of her. All of us living, breathing here today because of Lily. Thank you, Lily, for saving us, for being my friend, 
and for being a sister when I needed one most. We love you, and we'll miss you. Agreed. Check on Dr. McClintlock. Oh, Doc. That was a beautiful wedding, everyone. I think this was really nice. I'm glad everyone could get together. Um, Jesus Christ, Sheriff. I am sorry. Hey, uh, Doc. Oh, God. D hey, hey, Doc. <coughs> oh, jeez. Oh. I'm sorry. I just, um. This has been a very trying day. What, what, what did you need? You needed me to find any screws or anything? What if she's a synth? Are you okay? Uh, I don't have any questions. You want revenge, don't you? Are you okay? All right, so I'm guessing these uh, mean it goes forward, right? Yeah, are you okay? Not really, no. I still see her face every time I close my eyes. This is something we're all going to need closure on to recover. What if she's a synth? Let's ask. When the sheriff brought her body back to the bleachers, we had Dr. Gary do an autopsy on her. That's become common practice with all of our dead. Just to be sure. There were no synth components of any sort that you find on Gen 3 synths present. That only points to one conclusion, unfortunately. That's really Lily in that grave. Hmm. You want revenge, don't you? That's how the bleachers operates, yeah. We still haven't found Lenny, the scaver who sold me the info about the mass chem hall. He knows our reputation of settling scores, and he hasn't come back to see me about the status of the tip he gave me, like he always has before. The deputies know who he is and are watching for him. He wouldn't get into Diamond City without us knowing. Since he's avoiding the city, and us, we can only conclude he knows something and doesn't want us to find out what. He's in for a shock if he thinks we're going to forget about this while any of us are still alive. We're posting a bounty for him to be brought to us alive when we get back to the city. Oh, nice. I don't have any other questions. I'm, I'm getting cold, though. Okay. The sheriff is going to escort the three of us back to Diamond City. As you can imagine, we're in very good hands. Maybe we'll see you back there soon? Thank you for coming all the way out here. Of course. You take as long as you need, Bob. You hear? Thanks, DP. Just give me a bit longer, then we can start the long haul back. We're gonna stick around here a little longer. The sheriff has some power armor business with Zeke to take care of before we leave. Thanks again for coming all the way out here. Looks like Lily's got a knack for choosing her friends well. We'll see you back at the city later. How are you guys and gals? That's right, Steve. They're wonderful people. Funeral services. Funeral services for Lily have ended. The quest will end when you leave the Adam Katz garage area. All right, Jerry. Hey, come on. Sorry I cheesed, yelled at you before. Excuse me. Not now. All right, all right. Go ahead. Those dogs always here? Is there always a dog patrol? Oh, they took my funeral invite. Let's go, a bunch of Smurfs. Business face. Took a really long time to get to the Adam Cat's garage. Maybe you were sent some mail in the meantime. This is a possibility. Also, I had God mode on for a second there. Um. Hey, Jerry. I know you're in a formal attire, but could you? I did tell you to come over here. Jeez, dude. You know, I just came from a funeral. I didn't get to look at this before. Dig? No, man. Oh. Steve, don't step on it. Don't, 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 no. You don't, don't, come on. The Centerfield Greenhouse Apiary, maintained by Dr. McClintock, is filled with bees. Come get a bee burger. What time is it? I gotta, I gotta go to sleep. Hello there. Hello there. Huh? Hey, Gary. Hi. Hey, how Sandra. I'm good. Night, Dr. Pepper. 
Letter from a citizen. Everyone get in here. I want to read it. Also, uh, I do have... Uh, I am going to try to do a flush. We do have some uh, obscurum. I'm, I'm, uh, no, wait. No, no, the, no the, the, I'm pretty sure, yeah. All right, well, I'm reading my letter. It's just a heads up. Rumor has it you're a deadly do-right sort of person. If you're interested in a little work, meet me to the north of the school at noon. I'd value discretion in this matter, so please don't tell anyone. Slinky Louie. Hmm. The school at noon. Oh, damn! All right, the cat came back. Mr. Sphincter. <laughs> Mr. Sphincter came back. We got our new posters. Mr. Sphincter, you eat up. You got your food there. <laughs> I forgot about the terrifying Mickey Mouse. I love that. All right. Good day to you. Good day to you too, Twisted Mister. It's closed. Oh, look at the menu. It's dark as balls. Oh, noon. North of the schoolhouse. There's a schoolhouse over here. The Great Green Jewel. Oh, look at all these flags. Hmm. Protected by the sheriff. The fens. Respite for weary. Business for the honest. No mercy for aggressors. Our snipers see you. Oh, and I can see your rocket soldiers. Hello. Huh? huh? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there a mutant in there? Man, that guy did not want to talk to me. All right. I'll just leave them to do their business. Oh, okay. The school inside the the. I gotcha. Zip solid snake. Yeah. Okay. I like the custom armor for the uh, the sheriff's department. I love those lights too. All right, I'm gonna try to talk to him. Oh man, you got a huge gun too. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Hey there. Yes. Yeah. All right, man. Carry on. Field diner. In-house spaghetti. Nuka mixer taco Tuesdays. No synths. Oh, those guys and gals. They better take this steak out of my wall. All right, I have not been in here in a while. Yeah, okay, Steve, take a bed. I'm going to sleep. I'll see you at noon. Uh, oh, that's a rabbit. I brought some bread if you guys want. Steve, we want some bread, Jerry. I have another piece of bread that was on the floor. Oh, okay, sure. Take the only leaning spot. Well, I guess we'll just wait for our contact. No one should uh, interrupt us while we're having lunch. <laughs> Surly mailman. He seems uh, different. Oh, he's coming over here. He's coming over here. Coming over here. Act cool. Oh. oh. Not coming over here. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Don't touch bread with your poop hands. Oh, wait. No, he's uh, 11.42 a.m. Oh, or it could be her. Sister Luna. Hey. There you are. Here I am. You're Lily's friend, right? I saw you during the funeral at the Adam Cat's garage. Thanks for showing up. I've got myself a little problem that needs fixing, and it needs done real quiet like. Uh oh. There's a reputation on the line. Well, I'm horrible at that. Uh, can I have some details on the job maybe later? Uh, who are you? You can call me Luna. Anything else isn't really necessary for this business transaction. Hmm. Can I have some details on the job? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, sure. I suppose I can tell you. Just keep this hush hush. Once we're done, I never met you, if you know what I mean. You see, I had a scaver run off with a payment of mine for some die fixer. He just took the money and ran as far as I can tell. Been a month now. Normally, I don't pay in advance. 
I'm the hardest business boots in the green zone, which is the reputation we're worried about here. But this guy was just getting started and had a sob story Gary. about being poor. So I paid up front, figuring I'd help him get his scaven business going. So yeah, I broke one of my own rules of acquisition and it bit me in the ass. Never pay up front. The trick is, the FSD can't hear about me getting swindled. Or there goes my rep as the top merchant in the stubs and the rest of the green zone. And I've got a kid I've got to raise. Mm -hmm. Spending a few days to go out and find him isn't really a choice I have. So, here we are. Alright, I'll loudly murder him. Sure, I can handle that. Excellent. You can't miss this guy. He's got a beard, he bought one of these scarves I'm wearing off me, and wears a leather jacket and hard hat. He was bragging about getting the okay to set up a stall in Bunker Hill. But that was a month ago. Dishonest traders tend not to stay put very long. If he's not in Bunker Hill, it's probably because he ripped someone off there, too, and wants to lay low. So, good neighbor would be the next place. As I said, this is about reputation. Get that scarf back, and you can keep the caps you beat out of him. Or fish off his dead corpse. Either way. Make sure the others see what happens when you f*** with the sheriff's department. Just don't tell anyone it was me he ripped off. I can't wait here for you. So I need you to mail the scarf to me in the stubs by dropping it in the mailbox at the entrance so I know the job's done. If you want in the green zone, it's only a matter of time until they ask me about you. Get me that scarf. I'll mention you're dependable, okay? Every one of us is dependable. All right, where'd that uh, surly mailman go? Hey, uh, I, I actually, uh... Excuse me. Uh, wait. Just tan CJ's ass for me. What? Or shoot him, if it's easier. Once you're in the green zone, I don't have to pretend like I don't know you. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay? All right, take care, sister. Swatta, swatta. Who needs a swatta? What do we got? CJ was talking about getting a booth at Bunker Hill. Check there first. And then, after that, we gotta check out, uh, Good Neighbor. All right, we are here at Bunker Hill. I don't think he's set up. Looks like he, uh... Come see me right away when you get this note, CJ. Several of my customers have gotten sick off your potted meat from Lukowski's. I think it might have been bad. T.S. Alright. Check long neck Lukowski's for CJ. We got another clue, Jerry. Let's go. Alright, we are here. Yeah, that's right. Not oh. so smart now, are you? Let's see you try and tell people about that meat when you're in it. You think I'm just gonna stand there while you take down my entire game? Nah, I'm gonna make a special batch just for you now, bu Um... Whoa! Easy, buddy. Stay back. Who are you and what the f*** do you want? What was that about? People getting sick. What do you mean by contaminated meat? You killed them! Take it easy, what's going on here? What do you mean by contaminated meat? I, I didn't say anything oh. about feeding ghoul meat to people. Why would you accuse me of doing such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about people getting sick? Sick? <laughs> no. I said they were, they're, they're, uh, that they were, uh, were, mm, stick. Yeah, they were going to stick with my meat. Oh. Yes. They were sticking with it because it was the best. Can you say? That's what I, uh, said right there. Just, just now. Over the, the dead body. <laughs> oh man, this isn't good, is it? Uh, what's going on here? Um. Come on, CJ. You can. T hmm. You can talk to. Uh. Err. This is my uncle, Bob. Bob. Bob, from the, uh, uh he out of town. He came for my, um, my, uh, 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 u
Enough. Tell him to die. Bullshit. You're lying. Maybe I'll just kill you and take what I came for. I'll keep quiet if you hand over that scarf. Yeah, that's what I want. Oh, the scarf, huh? Luna sent you, didn't she? Oh. Remind me never to cross her again. Here you go. Just... Just don't tell anyone what you saw out here, okay? Don't worry about that. We're good, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Business is business, you know? Oh, I know, CJ. I know. Alright, CJ, you have a wonderful night. Excuse me. Thank you for the scarf. Jerry, I just wanted to give him a false sense of security. <laughs> kill, 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 kill! <laughs> Oh, Jerry, we shouldn't be this happy about it. That's just doing business with the McGooberries. Ooh, mailbox is right here. Someone put a scalpel in there. That's rude. Sister Luna scarf. Sister Luna, you're the only one. Chicken running from all my guns. Game changer. Maybe the mail got delivered while you were out. Check your mailbox or face the bleachers, HOA, oh god. Oh my god, we have got to get over there. Out of my way, kid. 